Hi, I'm Wendy Rahamat and welcome to Season 2 Indigenous Bites. I'm here on a pepper plantation in the south of Trinidad, Carapal to be exact. Carapal is about half an hour from Point Fortin and about 5 to 10 minutes from Lucy Road Beach. So we're kind of really south. To my right, I've got a lovely red pepper and this is a Maruga red pepper that was once upon a time the hottest pepper but since then Scorpion and Seven Pot has taken that over as the hottest pepper. On my left hand side I've got gorgeous yellow peppers and actually yellow and red peppers are specific varieties of peppers that are planted by the farmers to give us just that yellow and red peppers and of course when they cross pollinate on the field you get the variegated version which is the beautiful sunset colored peppers. And do you know when the weather gets hotter like it is these days, the peppers do by extension get hotter and the skin tends to quail up and get a little rougher in texture. On that note, I'm going to try and find my farmer to have a little chat with him. I'm here with Mr. Rennie Burbal. He is the farmer and owner of this pepper estate where we're here today at. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Mr. Burbal, um, tell me how did you get into farming or was it a family? Has it been in your family? Yeah, it has been in the family. It has been quite a while I've been farming, approximately 31 years now. I've been involved in agriculture. Um, quite a lot in peppers, both hot and primento peppers. Is it, did you start in peppers or did it change along the years? Uh, well, we first really started off with tomatoes and we moved from tomatoes you know, because of problems with soil and so on. But we went to, to peppers, mainly hot peppers to start with. So how long have you been doing the hot peppers? Well, I've been doing hot peppers for about, could be about 27 years. Okay, so um, where do you sell them? Mainly the markets or do you export as well? We, we sell people who do the exporting. We, we sell to what we call the middleman. We sell them peppers and they sell to the exporters and so on. At a time we used to, but then it stopped. With the September 11th thing, yeah, it shut down. Right. So is it that peppers are more lucrative for you as a farmer or is it um, more acceptable with respect to weather conditions and things like that? Well, it has to do with a bit with both, you know, because with the, the weather, it's easy to control at times in the, um, with watering and so on. It takes less, especially in the dry season like now, and it will be able to withstand the, the tough weather condition that we were facing in the dry season. How many seasons are there for peppers during the year? Because I know sometimes I go to the market and they're expensive. I mean, they're always peppers and sometimes I go and they're cheaper. That's when I decide to make my homemade pepper sauce. So how many times do you think? Uh, the pepper, pepper grow all wrong, you know, all wrong. But it has to do with the condition and the land. It has to do with, um, with the terrain. The lowlands will not be able to produce pepper in the rainy season. They easily melt and they die, but on the, the hillside where you get a, a lot of rain, you are able to, to grow the peppers easily. But then you have a lot of farmers who have their land situated in flat. So that is why at a certain time you find the prices are up and down. When it's like dry season, you find now the pepper will be cheap because everybody can farm the peppers, right. especially the hot peppers. We do a little bit of nearly all the, the hot peppers. But um, you remember we have two of the hottest peppers in Trinidad. That is the scorpion pepper and the, the Moruga red, right? At the back oh, of the me, Maruga you'll red. see the big red ones. That is called the Moruga red. You get that? Oh, okay. And it's a pepper that the market like. And then you have the big yellow that the market is accustomed to. So these are the peppers that we farm generally. And from time to time, we'll change I have different variety of the pimentos. We start by the end of December, early January, so that we could we could um, plant and harvest by the end of probably June, because after that the rain comes in, six months. and and then you have the area the lowland flooding, so you that you can't sell that 
but they want those on the hill like the, the hot the pimento peppers yeah then we will be able to harvest that even after the rain comes well you know we're here today and we're going to make some pepper roti what are your what's your take on pepper roti it's a nice local traditional dish and um i think people are fond of it and uh, i myself like it and um i don't like it all that heated but without the pepper it's not really pepper roti so i do enjoy it and i have fun with it mm -hmm. Getting right into the pepper roti. Of course, we need some about four cups of premium all purpose flour. Everybody has their version of pepper roti and it has evolved quite a bit through the years. Got some baking powder here, of course, and a little bit of salt. And when I make my roti, I just really love to use a little bit of ghee. So I'm putting just a bit of ghee in there. And I'm just to get in there with my hands and... this dough onto my counter and just continue kneading it. As you can see, it's, it's a pretty wet dough. And that's how you want it to be. A little bit more dry flour and that's pretty much all we need. I'm going to let it rest for about half an hour and come back and roll out the oil. Uh, My dough has been resting for about 30 minutes, so let's just divide it up now. We're going to make our lawyers. Of course, you know when you, you make your um, roti into uh, balls, that's called a lawyer, for those of you that are not familiar. So I've got two pieces here. And each of these are going to be divided into two as well. After your dough is, it's going to be a little hard to handle, but that's okay because that means that you get really soft, delicious roti. Okay, I'm going to cover these up and let these rest for about 10 minutes. Then, while that's happening, I'm going to mix up the fillet for my pepper roti. So an integral part of pepper roti is, of course, peppers. And I've got a beautiful variety of peppers here today. Here we've got a habanero. And here we've got a cross between a habanero and a seven pot. Of course, that happens on the fields. You've got cross-pollination. And this is, of course, a cross between a seven pot and a pimento pepper. So, Lots of really cool stuff happens with um, cross-pollination and you find wonderful peppers like this every time you go to your farmer's market. So of course the base for my um, pepper roti is potato. It's pretty much aloo pie fill in and you add some more fresh peppers to it. So I've got um, some mashed potato here that's already been boiled and of course I'm adding a good bit of jeera, ground roasted jeera or cumin. Of course, everybody knows this is cumin or jeera. All you do is toast it 
and grind it up. I'm adding a little bit of carrots to that as well. And of course, a nice helping of chopped habaneros and garlic cuisine. Season that all up with some salt. I'm going to stir that all up together. There are lots of different types of ingredients people are using inside of pepper roti. Um, you can find lots of really, I think, kind of strange ingredients like pineapple, and corn. I don't think those really belong, but I love, um, I love to remain traditional. I'm going to add some freshly chopped saib to my mixture now because I really love the flavor of chopped saib. You can also add shadow benny if you have that on hand. So when you're rolling out your roti, make sure or you're rolling out your lawyers. And I wanted to tell you this earlier, lawyer as in L-O-Y-A, not L-A-W-Y-E-R. It's an indigenous term for when you make your roti into balls. You call it a lawyer, not a lawyer, L-A-W-Y-E-R. Anyway, a little bit of trivia humor there for you. Um, you try and make them the same size. And of course you want to make these, roll these two out the same way at the same time. So that when you start to cook them, you don't have to come back over here and roll your second roti out. So this goes onto the tower again. This time around we put that on there. We can let that sit for a while. And we spread our pepper roti fill in onto that. Using the back of a spoon I find really helps with this. Um, if it's got fresh peppers in there I wouldn't really recommend that you use your never know the degree of heat that's in these um, peppers. Good, so that looks good. Move that around now like so. And then we want to match this up with the one we just rolled out. Press it down a bit with your hands. Oopsie. Right, there you go. And now we want to flip that over. I'm going to use my arm. Open your utensils, my tabla. Turn that over. And we apply a nice, generous amount of ghee. Ghee is really clarified butter. Just has a wonderful flavor. You hear the sizzle and you smell it. It's absolutely appetizing. I'm gonna take this off. Rest this here. 